And of course, unscrupulous people manipulate the media every day. And if you manipulate the media, of course you can manipulate the public by telling them that if you buy this stock, you never have to work uh, for the rest of your life. With gung-ho banks, media, government, and a very gung-ho population, Iceland went on a binge. Banking was privatized so that money was flowing more freely around and people could invest, buy, or do stuff that they didn't have the possibility to do before. Reykjavik became trend city, and Icelanders the ultimate nation of early adopters. In the 80s, we used our credit cards for package tours to Spain. And by the turn of the century, lines of credit to buy cars and SUVs. By 2007, Icelanders owned 240,000 vehicles. This in a country of 200,000 licensed drivers. Washer women were driving to work here in Toyota Land Cruisers because uh, everybody could get a loan. Today we have one of the 500 richest persons in the world from Iceland and his private jet is waiting on Reykjavik Airport. The stretch between the poorest Icelander and the richest Icelander is now astronomical compared to the sort of incremental difference that was in the 80s. It seemed too good to be true. Icelanders consistently ranked among the happiest, wealthiest, longest living and least corrupt nations in the world. By early 2008, capitalist Iceland was a vastly different place from the one I left 20 years ago. I think we are getting ahead of ourselves. For example, poverty and such issues are, are becoming an issue in Iceland for the first time because there is such a big gap between rich and poor here in Iceland. It's, it's much higher than in the Scandinavian countries, which we usually compare ourselves to.